Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for our next hot topic. We're talking about the fact that Nigeria slips lower on African ICT Development Index. And we're joined by our guest, Dominic Rume Uriri. He's a certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. Good morning, Dominic. Thank you for joining us. I was tempted to say Rume. <laughs> Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, we're seeing that Nigeria slipped lower on the African ICT Development Index. Please, can you just help me make sense of this? Because I, I was trying to like do my research. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot. So just explain this to me in layman's terms. OK. It's very sad as we have seen Nigeria truly slip in the global rankings for ICT. For context, right, compare it to a country like Mauritius in Africa, uh, which is the first, and then we just won Bafana Bafana yesterday, mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. They rank second in Africa, followed by Kenya. Nigeria is far down on that particular list. So you can imagine some of the... What number um, are we on now? I think we're about 60-something. We're about... 15 on that particular list. Mm. About 15 on that particular in African Africa. list. Yes, in Africa. Now, one of the major things that have caused this is, is that um, we've had poor internet infrastructure, we've had low um, infrastructure gap. That's the fact that um, there are low, there are no much um, the smart devices that is available to the layman that can really do all of these things is not as cheap as what the man can truly afford. Mm. So these things have been a major factor. In fact, another thing too has been um, the policy and regulation that have also been there. You see, it was in 2022 that uh, 2022 that license was even released to some other private um, companies to be able to see that they carry out the broadband. So that has been one of the things that has made us to rank really low in that particular ICT rank ratings. So what does this even, what does this mean for us now? Um, is there any chance that we might still go up or this is where we're at? And how can we, um, what are the things that we need to do to make sure that we rank higher, maybe when the next survey is being done? Okay. It truly, right now, this this is not a good place for us to be playing in as a giant of Africa. Mm. But it's a good one because we, as a young population, the population is doing its best to be able to see that some of the major challenges, like the lack of internet connectivity, we solve it ourselves. Like since the Stalin came, I know a lot of young Nigerians that have gone ahead of government to be able to buy themselves a very good device. Mm -hmm. Right and now, because they've been able to go and buy themselves a very good device, you can see that they can be able to bridge that particular technological gap of data problem. Now, um, so there is when we also look at what the Honorable Minister of um, Mr. Tijani, he is doing very well in terms of his include trying to include much more trajectory and plans and strategy to see that we will be able to get out of this in under two years. You know, it all starts with a plan. And because there is a plan, we will be able to achieve it. The future is looking bright for Nigeria because money and investment is going in already. And we look at 2024 as a time where there will be better 5G connection all over Nigeria. So um, from here, we're moving to where? Number 15 is quite low. And what are the immediate things that need to be done uh, to make sure that we return to this place? Because if you're talking about infrastructure, poor internet, poor this, poor that, it may not, uh, it may not be a problem that we can solve just now. Does it mean we are going to linger in number 15 or there is hope for us? <laughs> we won't linger there. There is hope for us. How? Like I said, um, infrastructural gap is already being um, tackled. In terms of ICT, when you say the information communication technology of the country, what do you really mean? The ability for 
information to be able to be disseminated very, very fast. There are also a lot of um, educational programs that is also going to be able to see that the skill sets, the manpower that, is actually, that actually needs to be built, like in terms of routing, switching, ensuring that networking goes well in big companies. There are a lot of Cisco certification programs that are already doing that. So we have more personnel that are equipped entering into this new industry. Now, uh, let's not call it new, but relatively young industry, especially here in Nigeria, because we are not yet at the forefront of it. So the youth population, they are also very interested in saying that they go the way of technology. You see everybody now saying tech bro, Texas. Yeah. And because of that particular part that they've also taken, they need to find the ways to be able to fix these problems themselves. And I tell you the truth that uh, it is just a function of better policy and more exposure to funding that we'll be able to see that, okay, we can cover up these basic gaps and then we'll definitely be doing well. Okay, so what role do you think um, education and skills can um, start to improve these gaps that we're talking about? So um, education is very important because... Actually, if you're going to be a tech bro, Texas, you need to know a lot about that, right? So what role can education um, play with this in making sure that we're covering the gaps and, you know, we're coming back up because, like Yam Gu said, number 15 is not um, a good spot to be on. So education and skill is, I think, in the words of a wise man, he says, your skill is the only thing you have when every other thing has been taken away from you. Mm. So, um, for a country like Kenya, you can see how well they've developed their ICT sector. They've also taken out time to be able to upskill the young population. They don't, they, they, they build hubs, like the Nigerian government have invested in more hubs, in digital hubs, um, programs that are for empowerment to be able to see that young people also get involved. However, this is just something that has possibly been done on the surface level. We need to go more grassroots. We need to be able to do it the way we carry out election campaign. It's as serious as um, sensitizing our citizens against, um, to be able to be aware of polio. because. In a digital world, it is an anathema to see the giant of Africa take such a position in the world. We cannot be taking such a position in the world. So it is something that needs urgent fixing in terms of building more hubs that can actually engage people digitally and with this skill set. You know, it is one thing to talk the talk. It's also another thing to walk the talk. Now. For us, uh, it, just, it just cost us about, um, about, about say, $7,000 to be able to fix um, steady power with the current situation here, uh, with the current situation we're having in this country. And that's because as a tech hub, we're able to afford $7,000 to fix our solar. How many other people will be able to afford $7,000 to fix their solar? Which means that if there's no power, if there's no data, I think in, uh, MTN has also <laughs> reduced, increased the prices of data as well. So you can see that the bundle you normally do is no longer available. So there needs, I won't say they should subsidize some of these things, but truly there needs to be like um, a high level of competition too, even with the skill and training to be able to see that some of the major infrastructure gaps, like the lack of internet is one of the worst thing. Mm. The internet the internet thing reduces the access, the access you have to the global world. So skill will definitely be a good thing because mm -hmm. of course you can't build it. Uh, you need education to establish an economy like our mantra always say. You need education to establish an economy and without education you can't develop skill. All right, I think that's a very good way to leave it. We wish you had more time. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rumi. All right. And thank you very much, my very good friend. <laughs> you won't remember my name. I'm not Rumi. So <laughs> <laughs> you will remember Rumi. What's your name? Thank it's all right. You. Thank you so much for being a part of our show this morning.
All right, we've been speaking to Dominic Rume Rure. He's a certified blockchain architect and a metaverse expert. And we'll be talking about the fact that um, Nigeria has slipped well to number 15 now on the um, African ICT Development Index. But this is where we wrap it up on our show. We hope that you've had um, a good time with us, really. You want to call any final words? Congratulations, Nigeria. Congratulations <laughs> to Nigeria. Yes, yeah, we yeah. defeated the Bafana Bafana, and right now we're in the finals. And hopefully on Sunday, we're going to be emerging as winners. Mm -hmm. The Super Eagles are going to be soaring. Mm -hmm. But and, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they have already won the trophy in my heart, whether mm -hmm. they emerge victorious or not, because all the odds were against us. Even from our own people, nobody mm -hmm. believed in them or believed in the coach. But now we kept progressing one goal at a time until we are in the finals yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. whatever happens, congratulations still at Super Eagles. Well, hopefully when we come um, on Monday, we'll be giving like a congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, this is where we'll wrap it up. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brumet. And I am Nyamgul Agadi. Let's do it again tomorrow.